Hello and welcome. My name is Sam from Digital Scan 3D. Today we're going to look at an example of how to use the interactive alignment in DesignX. Now, what is the purpose of doing an alignment? The purpose of an interactive alignment is to orientate your 3D scan into a position or an orientation that is better suited for a downstream process. So for example, if you wanted to uh, do any reverse engineering and then move this 3D scan to a new orientation, which would then suit your downstream process like a uh, assembly or some other type of uh, analysis, you can definitely do that. So doing the alignment will help that. Now, why would you need to align it in the first place? Well, many 3D scanners start their scan or orientate their scan by default in some arbitrary reference local coordinate system based on whatever 3D scanner you have. Uh, sometimes Artec or some of these other 3D scanners have different ways to approach what their default alignment is. So oftentimes you'll find your 3D scan to be in, in some sort of unintentional or arbitrary orientation when you first import it. As you see, I've already imported this file in and it is not aligned to my coordinate system. Now I can turn on my coordinate system by just coming over here to my reference coordinates and I can turn on origin. And you can see that it's not touching my part, it's out in space, it's not aligned nicely to my part at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and align it to this part. And for purposes, I'm going to go ahead and say that my front face is gonna be like the side face here, or this, this back fight face. And if I look down at the top of it, uh, I'd probably want to orientate it so that I, I can have kind of like this orientation right here, where I have the words and I can put the origin point right in the center of my square here. So that's kind of how I'm gonna to approach to this. Now, some of the different ways to approach it is you can go straight into extracting data points to uh, then um, define some reference geometry and then using the reference geometry you can then define points in your interactive alignment so before we and another uh, another way you can approach the alignment is by auto segmenting your part now auto segmentation here will create a bunch of regions across your part which will de automatically define different entities or different uh, facets of your 3d scan so if it detects a lot of these points are, are in a planar uh, orientation, it'll create all those points as a plane. We'll go ahead and do a combination of the two for the purposes of this demo. Now, before we get too deep, let's go ahead and take a look at interactive alignment and see just what it's looking for. So here in interactive alignment, we have our moving entities and in our case, our 3D scan. And we can just leave that as normal and we're gonna go ahead to the next stage. And here in this stage here, we have two methods uh, at our disposal, a 3, 2, 1 alignment and an X, Y, Z alignment. For the purposes of this demo, I'm gonna demonstrate the X, Y, Z alignment. Now for the X, Y, Z, it's looking for a position, an X axis, a Y axis, or a Z axis. And I say, or, because you only need two out of the three axial directions. And by right hand rule, the third one will automatically come with the selection of the two. The position, you can think of that as where do you want your origin? So if I wanted my, or like I said, I want my origin to be roughly in the center of this screen. And I think on this back face here, this back um, edge surface, uh, I can create a point that would define that, that space. And therefore I would then be able to choose that position, that point um, for my origin. Now it's split up in two different screens. Here on the left screen, you have your current alignment and in the right side, you'll have your future alignment. So you could manually come in here and start like wiggling stuff around, but you won't get everything exact. At least it won't be, um, it'll be very hard to get it exact. So we're gonna go ahead and use regions as well as reference geometries to then properly define the alignment on this 3D scan. So let's go ahead and jump out of interactive alignment and get started. First things first, we're gonna go ahead and do an auto segmentation. I'm gonna leave everything on default for the time being, but I'm gonna preview it. This will give me a chance to review the results of the default settings. And let me take a chance to see if I wanna go back and change some settings. Now, taking a look at this, uh, for the purpose of this, 
it has everything I need, mostly because I just want this front face here. Uh, but I could definitely use any of these other cylinder cylindrical features. But I'm going to go ahead and say this is good. And just because these words up here could technically um, mess with the plane fit, I'm going to take them out of the region. So I'm going to turn off my um, planes over here with my eyeball and go to my region tab. And then I'm going to say split. And then uh, square selection works fine. I'm just going to square selection that area. And now it'll it has removed that selection from the region. So now if I hover over that region, this region recognizes itself as a plane. You'll see that the words are no longer uh, in that selection. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and jump back to our home tab. And let's go ahead and set up some reference geometry. So let's go ahead and choose our reference plane. And we're going to fit a plane to this front face. We can preview it with the magnifying glass here. And we can see that it's fitting nicely on this front face. Could say accept. And since I wanted to put it on this back face here, we could go ahead and choose some of these regions here at the bottom. And then we can say extreme position. And we want to choose the direction of that plane one. And the reason why we do it this way is just so that we have a lot of points that are very consistent on the top here that we can use to properly orientate the part. And then we can use the extreme position on the edge here at the bottom. And with that, we can say oh, accept and OK. And then we can go ahead and get out of our plane command. I'm going to go ahead and turn my planes back on, but I'm going to hide plane one because we do not need it anymore. And now that we have those at our disposal, let's go ahead and create a sketch. And the reason why we're going to do a sketch is that we can go ahead and sketch out the square here and some circles to help define our center line and our center um, and our point that we're going to use as our origin. So starting on this plane too, I'm going to go ahead and right click it. And this will bring up my quick access menu here, which has the mesh sketch available to it. Because I selected a plane or a surface which a sketch can be applied to. So in this case, I'm choosing mesh sketch. And here in this mesh sketch, I'm going to offset it upwards. So I have a nice clean circular profile on these circular uh, features. Now I'm going to orientate um, my sketch bounding box just so that I can kind of focus in on what I'm working on and not confuse myself with anything else. So now that I have shrunken down that bounding box a little bit, I now have three circles that I can work with. Now I also want to add another section, which I can then shift over and use for my uh, square over here. So I've now bound around the square. In this one, I'm going to create a silhouette range. Now the purpose of a silhouette range is it's it'll look over the entire area and find a silhouette for just that uh, section. So as you can see here, um, my bounding box is showing a silhouette range for just that section right there. And with that, we can go ahead and accept and it'll take us into our sketch window or sketch menu. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn off our scan so we can just focus on our polylines right now. First things first, I'm going to go ahead and create that center line using the circles. So I'm going to create uh, a circle at the bottom just by double clicking that fit. Or you can go ahead and just left click and then accept the fitting that way as well. And accept the. And now, and now that I have these two circles, 
And now that I have these two circles, they're going to be used for reference only. So I'm going to lock them in place. So I went ahead and just box selected both of them, right click and anchor them in place. Next, I'm going to go ahead and create a line that I can use as a center line. So I'm going to set it as a construction only and just go from point to point. Now this I'm going to treat as my center line across my part here. Now, if we zoom in here, next thing we need to do is draw a rectangle. Now we have a rectangle tool here, but if you notice, it's not aligned. It's aligned to our local sketch coordinate plane, not our part because our part is not aligned. So I'm going to go ahead and draw individual lines and then combine them together. So here I chose line and with the line tool, you can either box select and accept the fitting. You can box select multiple sections. You can double click or you can select or using the control key, deselect areas till you have just what you want. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and accept that fitting as well and exit out of the line command. Next, I'm going to go ahead and trim these with a corner trim option and just trim all these edges together. You can select left click and select the second one, or you can left click and hold and drag, and it'll also do the same operation. Now using our center line that we made earlier, we, which we know which we're going to treat as our vertical line in this case, we're going to go ahead and using the shift key, select some of these lines, right click, bring up our constraints, and we're going to go ahead and add some constraints such as perpendicular and parallel till we have this square fully defined or fully constrained, I should say. So perpendicular constraint, parallel constraint, another perpendicular constraint, and another perpendicular constraint. We can also use that center line and select two points and right click and go into our edit menu and force these to be symmetrical around that center line that we drew. Let's go ahead and turn on our scan just to review because I know there was a little bit of noise here on that edge. So I'm going to go ahead and shift this around so it looks like we have everything properly aligned to our scan data and when it's good I'm going to go ahead and go around and lock or anchor every single one of these lines. And don't worry too much if uh, some of the, the constraints turn red because we switched it fixed. It's just over constrained at this point. But since this is for alignment, it is okay. So now we're going to go ahead and try to find a point that would define the center point of this square. Now you can choose the center point of the circ of either line of any of the lines and extend it. And then you can find the center point of that line as well. And with that, we're going to go ahead and exit out of our sketch. And now we have everything we need. We have our top plane, which defines the base of our 3D scan. And we have a point which we can then use as our origin, as well as a vertical, a vertical line that we can use as our Y axis and a line if we want to use as our X axis. So now that we have all of our elements, let's go ahead and jump back into interactive alignment, go to next stage and start selecting our options. So position, we can choose our point that we have predefined our Z axis, we can choose plane two. And our Y axis, we can choose that straight line that we have defined. And you can see on the right side here, if I orientate it the top up, you can see on the right side that the scan is properly aligned. You have the origin right in the center right there in the center of the square, and you have the part properly aligned in the vertical orientation, like we stated at the beginning of this example. And so from our current alignment to our future alignment, we are now properly aligned. So at this point, we can go ahead and accept and exit out 
of the interactive alignment. Now that our scan is properly aligned, you will see that it is aligned and you can rotate to any view and it is properly aligned. All the features we use to define the alignment are safe to delete at this moment. And with that, we have a fully aligned 3D scan. Thank you for watching. Take care.